Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming back at you with another video. Okay, so today we're going to be talking a uh, little tech talk. Um, so there's a couple of things that I've been seeing a lot of online. Um, a lot of people having problem with, oh, I just put a new top end in my bike. I took it off for a ride and I got a chip on my exhaust port. And uh, my piston ring is destroyed and my cylinder is destroyed and... Oh, my God, I can't believe this what happened. Um, it looks like my ring went into my exhaust port or went into my intake port. Um, or I had great compression after running the bike until it got warm. It just, the compression just dropped off, not running right. So, everybody's going crazy trying to figure this out. And I, my first question is, well, what did you do to the bike? And they said, oh, I, I, uh, I sent my cylinder out, I had a re out, or I had it honed if it's, a, if it's a steel one. I bought a brand new Wiseco piston, I put the piston in, and, uh, and then that was it. I made sure that I, I put the arrow towards the exhaust. Well, did you gap your ring? Or rings? Um, oh, what, what do you mean? Why, why do I do that? It's a brand, why do I need to do that? It's a brand new piston. Well, I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to get. I'm going to get into all the specifications on that too. And specifics, not specifications. Specifics. Each book has a measurement, which is for the diameter of your cylinder. Okay, and it's in thousands of inches. Okay, what this means is they take a measurement from the walls and how round it's supposed to be. Okay, when you hone a, a cylinder, you take material off. Okay, when you take material off, ring gaps open up, which is supposed to. On cylinders, the ring gaps are different. They're, they're wider because the rings are worn. They're worn down. When you buy a brand new piston, okay, this is a Wiseco piston made for Kawasaki. Okay, this is made to a specification. This is made to a specification. Sometimes, in some cases... Those specifications don't add up. They're not the same. So you always got to check them. Brand new rings are thicker than old, worn factory rings. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to check the gap. Why do you need to check the gap? Okay, I'm going to tell you why you need to check the gap. Because if you don't check the gap and your gap is too small, okay, what will happen is when this ring heats up, it will bind up. These will hit each other. The gaps will close completely and try to roll up over each other. Okay, instead of touching like this, they'll roll up on each other. And then the piston ring, instead of being coming in a perfect circle, it becomes an oblong shape like this. When it goes from this shape to this shape, the part that's going to expand is going to go into the biggest hole it can possibly find which would be your exhaust port, and that's what ships the direct air. When this is going up, that's what ships your uh, exhaust port. That's why. It's because your ring gap is too small. You need to make sure you gap it. Now, I'm not going to give you the ring gap because in different engines, this is from a KV75 or an MT1, is going to be different from, say, a KE100 or a KM, KM100 or a KM90 or whatever. Okay? So you got to make sure... That you look up your gap for your specific bike that you're working on. Alright, Kevin, how do I gap my rings? Well, I'm going to show you that in a second, but I also want to show you something else that's very much important. Whenever you're working with a piston, here's your rings right here, okay? Do you see that pin? Let me see if I can find it right there. You see that pin that is right there where my thumbnail is? You want to make sure that that pin is there. Sometimes that pin goes. Sometimes it... it falls out of the piston goes out the exhaust sometimes it just melts down and is just completely gone if that pin is gone now you have another problem you have a problem where your ring could actually spin on the piston now on two stroke engines are different from four stroke engines four stroke engines do not have that pin okay they are the piston ring can move all the way around 360 degrees because it doesn't matter, there's no ports. But if you don't have that pin on your piston, now the ring gap can be lined up with, say, your exhaust port, 
your intake port, your transfer port, and shear off a part of your ring and also damaging your cylinder. So it's very critical to make sure that you have your proper ring gap and your proper, and make sure you both of your pins are in your piston. Okay? And then when you put your piston in, you'll see that arrow right there. It always faces the exhaust. And here's what it will look like right here. And then when you uh, compress the ring, that pin actually fills in that little that little gap. And it should be recessed back a little bit. It shouldn't be flush with the piston. See how this one's recessed? Set back a little bit. That's how it should be. It should not be flush with the outer part of the piston. Why is this important? Because you don't want that ring to rotate. And you want to make sure your piston is gapped properly. Now I'm going to show you guys how to gap rings. Um, let me get set up here, and then I'll uh, I'll click back on. All right. So I'm holding the phone by holding the camera, which is my phone, in my hand. So I'm doing this one-handed. So what I did was I set the ring inside the groove like this. See how one side is down further than the other. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your piston, you're going to stick it on top there, and you're going to push it down so it's flat. Okay. Now, the piston ring is evenly spaced in the, in the uh, cylinder, okay? You're going to grab your book and you're going to get your, uh, your filler gauges out, okay? And you're going to set it to whatever the specification is, okay? What you're going to do is see the gap right there. I'm going to take this, the filler gauges and I'm going to put this in here and go up and down with it. This is the wrong filler gauge, so then I'm going to go up. A fill gauge. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take your fill gauge and you're going to go into the ring on the side like so, and it should it should fit nice and not snug. So we move the ring, but you should feel just a little bit of drag, just like you do when you're doing your points. Okay, it should go in, and come right back out easily with slight drag. Okay. So this one here is, I got up to uh, 22 thousandths on this ring. All right, so what I'll do is I'll take that 22 thousandths. That's what I'm getting right there. And I'll take that ring and I'll go check it on the book and see if that's correct. Now, say say this is this gap right here is too small. 22 thousandths. This is a, we're going to pretend that it's a brand new piston ring. And we're going to say it's 21 thousandths. And it needs to be 22 thousandths. How do you fix that? Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to fix the, how to gap the ring properly. So we're going to pretend it's a 21 thousandths. We need it to be 22 or better thousandths. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Taking the ring out of the bore. Okay, you can see the piston ring. We're going to take this and we're going to stick it onto a piece of wood. Just like so, okay? Then you're gonna get yourself a set of files. Okay, I'm using some miniature files right here. All right, and you don't wanna go back and forth like a saw. Okay, so you wanna take this right here and you wanna go into the ring, into the ring. So you can go put it right on the end like that. And you're gonna go in, in, in. You're gonna do it about two to three times and then retest it, okay? Until you get the proper fit. The reason why you want to go in and not out, because if you go out, you can bring a, bu a burr on the outside of the ring. You don't want a burr on the outside of the ring. You want the, burr you want the outside of the ring to be smooth because you don't want to scratch the cylinder. So when you're gapping the rings, don't go like this. Just go in, in, in. Okay? Do one on this side, one pass on this side. One, two, one, two, one, two. That's how you want to do it. You want to do it evenly and equally. Because you don't want to wear down this pin surface too much, okay? Because that's remember that's where your that's where your gap margin is. So you don't want to wear that down incorrectly, okay? So that, my friends, is how you take care of piston rings. And once again, this step is critical. I don't care if you buy a brand new piston in the box, okay? This is made by Wiseco. This is made by Kawasaki. Their specifications. Our hearsay, okay? You can't trust them. You have to go by with what you've got. So, if you buy a brand new Wiseco piston, take the time, check your rings, make sure they're done, and then you can reassemble the whole thing.
but don't assemble a cylinder without properly gapping the rings. Doing so can cause engine failure, engine damage, and not a very long life for the engine. Okay, it's very important, especially on these older bikes. This is a cast iron cylinder. So to clean them up, I use a finishing hone. This is a cylinder hone that can go inside there and boom, 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 boom. You're not supposed to use these on a Nikasau. So if you have an aluminum cylinder and you got a KE100, you don't want to use that because you're ruining your Nikasau and then your whole, your whole uh, cylinder will be all different shapes, okay? Now, if you have some scoring in the cylinder, okay, some heavy scoring, some regular scoring, even some chipping, there is a company that can, um, well, they're all over the place, but what do you call it there, that can fix that. They can MIG weld that, and then your grooves, they'll fill that in with the Nikasau, you'll never even know they're there. I mean, the cylinder comes out smooth. Um, Nikasau is one of those um, coatings, it's expensive to have it done, yes. But the results are flawless. They're perfect. So I highly recommend it. A um, couple of things with the Nikasau coating. It makes it solid. It makes, it makes the aluminum strong. It has really good heat transfer. Okay. So if you have a cast iron cylinder. This is not sleeved. If you have a cast iron cylinder. The heat is going to go right out to these coolant fins. If you have an aluminum cylinder. With a steel sleeve. Now you got two different metals are heating up at two different temperatures and they're not a hundred percent. What you want is you want to make sure that you're doing your you're preparing your cylinder properly. If it's a cast iron, you can use this. If it is a cast iron, uh, if it's aluminum with a steel sleeve, you can use this. If it's an aluminum cylinder that doesn't have a sleeve, it's Nikasau, you have to have it Nikasau coated. Bottom line, that's how you fix it. No matter what cylinder type you're running, those are the three. No matter which one of those you're running, you have to gap your rings on all two-stroke and four-stroke engines. You have to. It's a mandatory must. It's the proper way of doing it. So that's what I would do. Gap your rings, and that's going to take care of your chipping of your uh, piston, your cylinder, and it's going to make your engine wear properly for a very long time to come. It's also part of an integrity test too. As the cylinder, as the piston rings wear, okay, now I get a lot of people say, Kevin, my rings look beautiful on the outside, but I think they're worn. Well, you can wear them. Remember, this is not just a ring, it's also a bearing. Okay, see what I did there? Bearing. Because this is what's going up and down your cylinder. This is a bearing surface. Okay, it will remain, if you, as long as the engine's running properly, your cylinder's not scored, this thing's going to look like brand new. When they wear out, that gap right there opens up, they become brittle, they become cracked. They can wear and look good, like this one here looks good. But, if that gap is too big, I know that this ring is worn out or my cylinder's too far worn out. Okay, so real simple. So if the ring gap is worn out, if it's too big... You want to check the diameter of your cylinder. You want to measure your cylinder. And you also want to make sure the thickness of your uh, piston ring is not worn down. Really, the only way you can uh, do that is comparing it to a new ring, unfortunately. But because there's no thick, uh, there might be a thickness spec in the uh, how thick the ring is supposed to be in the book. But once again, you're going to have to check that, you know. So, tools for this you're going to need. A good set of quality fill gauges and a, a set of files to do piston ring gap. That's how you do it. And, of course, your book. So, different year make models. Different countries have different specifications. That's why I'm not giving you guys the specifications on the bikes that we're doing. Um, I will as I do the models as we come up in the season. And I start doing them. Um, if I'm working on a KE100, for instance... And I happen to be doing that. I'll give you the specification for the bike that I'm working on. But there is really no generic ring gap. You know what I mean? They're different for different models, different makes. And um, that's how you do it. Also, too, is your ring gap, your ring lands right there where the ring sits in there, the groove. You can take your old piston ring, snap it in half, put it in the groove and clean it out and get all the carbon out of there before you reassemble it. That's another cool, quick tip. Always save your piston rings. They become... 
piston ring groove cool um, cleaning tools real good for that but I just want to show you guys this real quick as we're getting into the season and I've been seeing a lot of the a lot of bikes with chip cylinders on the exhaust broken rings destroyed pistons and typically they're brand new pistons I'm seeing why is this happening to my bike you got to gap your ring you got to gap your ring you got to make sure that that cylinder that piston is moving in and out properly it's, it's not dragging it's sliding in and out nicely if you have to really push on it and you get on that kickstart and you have to kick it, you got the wrong piston in there. Okay? So just keep that in mind. All right? Well, guys, that's what I got for you for today for check tips on the cylinder piston ring gap. It's a must do. Do it. It'll save your engine. Okay? Don't just buy a Wiseco piston thinking, oh my God, Wiseco, that's the best name in pistons. It is. But just because it's the best name in pistons doesn't mean. They know the specifications for your bike. This piston right here, I can tell you right now, will fit a couple of other bikes. It'll fit a Kawasaki. It'll fit a Suzuki. Okay? So it's made for other bikes as well. So when they do that, the thickness of the piston, the ring gap, it's going to be generic. you got to make sure you do it for your bike. Okay? Well, guys, that's what I got for you for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, we'll be back at it. So weather's starting to pick up a little bit. We're coming into February. I'm purchasing the house. So my wife and I. So we got uh, a little bit of moving to do. Then we'll be getting back onto bikes. Um, heavy. Really heavy. So we're going to be taking the shed, turning that into a workshop. And we, we got a whole bunch of stuff to do, guys. It's going to be mind-blowing. But anyway, and it's a new year too, so we're going to be stepping some things up on the channel as well. So I can't wait for you guys to be a part of that, and I'm going to definitely need your input. So I appreciate all your support, all your hanging out with me and watching my videos, commenting. And, uh, well, we'll be talking to you guys. All right? Thank you. Have a good night. Bye.